So one of the big things that we have seen from this government, a hallmark indeed, you might say, of the current government, is that they, well, they like to get their revenge. And it doesn't matter what type of revenge this may be. We've seen them against the judiciary, laws they don't like, against even their own parliament. But one in particular that is going to have huge, huge consequences, of course, is the fact that very often they have um, engaged in what has been called pork barrel politics, where they are, shall we say, funding the seats that vote for them while underfunding the seats that don't, as a form of almost punishment. Couple that, of course, with uh, crippling austerity and those seats that have, shall we say, have had even less, now have even less to spend. And this goes, of course, for the City of London. We've only just been through a mayoral election um, just last year, to which many of the Conservatives were praising the fact that this was the year they were finally going to get rid of Khan and that the City of London was once again going to be run by a very fiscally conservative conservative and he would solve all the City of London's problems. But of course, it couldn't be further from the truth. Once again, the city's problems do not stem uh, from the mayor's office. They stem from the fact that the government has indeed cut funding to many of the city's programs. Uh, the, the source of funding it's had access to are no longer there, mainly the EU, um, and more specifically to the TfL, thus creating, as we are going to go he over here, a crisis of funding transport for London that is essentially could become the new Brexit. So, uh, before we do diving into this, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Uh, of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So, you may remember it, the conversation I had with Gareth Dennis. He was saying this as well, that they are coming after uh, the TFL. So, we'll get into this. This comes from My, uh, my London. The title is, TfL's funding crisis is the new Brexit, and the sooner everyone admits it, the better. Four attempts, and we still don't have a proper deal. Boris Johnson and his team are being accused of not taking negotiations seriously. Businesses are warning that the uncertainty is not good for them. Unions are starting to get anxious at the prospect of lost jobs. And Londoners are being ignored. The whole thing is now starting to drag complete deja vu. Of course, next it's Telflix. They're the time when the government is putting transport at the centre of its levelling up agenda to bring the country closer together. London's public transport is indeed diverging. Most economists and politicians will tell you that it's a bad thing, but people have voted and re-electing a Labour mayor and of course K. Sarah Sarah. As we enter 2022, the sunlit uplands of the Metroland are looking far more fragile now more than ever. Transport for London says that it needs around £2 billion a year to plug a financial hole to keep the City of London moving, or else hundreds of bus routes are at risk and even a tube line could go, and the City won't be the same for decades to come. The government says it's scaremongering, and whoever you believe, whatever side you're on, if a deal was possible for Brexit, then a deal is possible for the TfL and the funding crisis. And we might just uh, might just learn from the uncanny similarities between the two. Last week's announcement that the Deputy Mayor for Transport, Heli, Ag Heli Alexander, will be stepping down was met with a very wry reaction. It was the acceptance that gave the dire products for London's transport and possibly the most unattractive bleak role a politician could have in the country, despite the £132 salary Mrs Alexander received. Although it's looking likely that Elizabeth's, like the Elizabeth line is set to open soon and the cycling continues to flourish across the capital, everything else is quite frankly depressing. The £2 billion funding crisis and declining passenger use, congestion problems, river crossings at risk of collapse or even closure, tube strikes every weekend for at least the next six months, concerns over women's safety and of course the growing anger over the Silvertown Tunnel. Every one of those there is a stick the Tory government knows that it can use to prod the Labour mayor, uh, Labour mayor team. And you know, someone who knows how to fight a losing battle. The And of course, cue the diehard Remainer Seb Dance, the former Labour MEP who famously held the sign, You're Lying, behind Nigel Farage in a Brussels speech. He will be taking over for Mrs Alexander. 
and assuredly a very competent and very principled politician. His real asset, of course, is in the deputy mayor for transport role, is the ability to be able to hold his head up and say, I tried to do the right thing when everything went wrong, when it inevitably will because City Hall has no real negotiating power, one fears. It means the negotiations to resolve the TfL's funding crisis are now essentially down to a significant amount of people who are invested in the Brexit debate. Seb Dance, Boris Johnson, the Department for Transport, who still who still haunt the, haunted by the queues at Dover, and the vocal Brexit criti critic Sadiq Khan. The former um, Parliamental Secretary to the Deputy for Exit to the U European Union, Claire Morley, now, si now sits on the TfL board after being appointed by the Transport Secretary, Grant Sharps, part of the conditions the government imposed on the first TfL bailout. The best case scenario is that each of these people will have learned from the mistakes made in the very choppy Brexit negotiations and use it to their advantage to try and come to a compromise in the interests for Londoners. In the worst case scenario, we will get a we won't get a proper deal for four years after the crisis started, and it could be very well be severe political casualties. If you do, if I direct you, of course, to the European Union flags on the side of the TfL's newest. Uh, for, uh, over £500,000 hydrogen buses, as well as the indication of how things appear to be going so far. As both the TfL and the government look for, for ways to try and come to an agreement, it would appear that a hard border is at risk for, for forming around London, in terms of transport at least, and Mayor Sadiq Khan flew to the idea of charging road users at least three to five pounds charge to enter the Greater London per day, with the funds helping to try and plug the TfL's financial black hole. The idea reportedly remains an option, but it seems to have been quashed by the government. The mayor is now insisting the proposals to shift this charge from road users to public transport users by removing the TfL from the National Travel Card Scheme, the link as to which the customs union will with the Northern Re the, the National Rail. Currently, if you live outside London, you can buy a travel card which does cover the TfL services in zones 1 to 6, which costs around £350, about £5.50 more than a standard return to the London terminus trains by station. By removing the TfL from that very agreement, the passengers would be forced to buy a standard return and then use the contactless Oyster card instead, which costs them more but would bring the TfL more money in fares and revenue. This would backfire massively. The cheaper travel card fares encourage those from outside of London to come and spend money in the capital. Should this be perceived as a travel card benefit disappear, those who then live in the home countries, home counties, would then find it much simple to just drive to London boundary, dump their cars at the first opportunity and get on the tube anyway. That will bring more congestion and more pollution to the streets of outer London and reduce train usage between the capital and the home counties, the commuter towns, which leads to, again, a reduction in services. At the same time, the mayor is desperately trying to, uh, to convert outer London tube station car parks into more financially lucrative housing developments, which will make TfL extra money. If he is successful, those now wishing to park and ride instead of buy a travel card will have to dump their cars in the side streets and places like Stanmore and bound to meet be bet by very strong local opposition. So far, four of TfL's planning applications have been rejected, with key Brexiteer and Barnet MP Theresa Villas accusing the mayor of a war on the suburbs. In recent years, to save money, the TfL has had to implement proposed charges to buses and train routes which run beyond Greater London and the boundary into the home countries. It tried to cut two routes into Blue Water, and the cut route for 167 from the Devon to Loughton after the subsidies stopped in 2016 is proposing a very much host of charges to buses in the Croydon Surrey border and reduce the frequencies on several remaining bus routes, such as Route 292 to Boarhead and Helmsforth. This work uh, this world might be your oyster, but I wouldn't be surprised if Essex no longer is, put it that way, and if TfL seems to have given up on the metropolitan lines entirely. It would not be easy to travel from the home counties to London as it was before the TfL funding crisis, whatever happens. Combined with the mayor's wish to try and push through the Silvertown Tunnel against much opposition and reduce the congestion charges, it would appear that the mayor is inadvertently penalising those who are urging public transport to encourage more people to use their cars. But despite the whole TfL funding crisis, which has caused a shift in people using their cars instead of public transport due to COVID in the first place, again, you get the whole idea. Wherever we go from here, it will be messy. 
right now, Khan probably has a better chance of ringing up Noel Edmonds for his infamous banker than trying to get decent funding settlement from Westminster. That is certain as we're reaching a very much a Brexit crescendo. With the fourth lockdown on new restrictions on the horizon, the whole of TfL's finances are set to get worse, not better. The TfL seems to have recently ta uh, ta tactically accepted this and has, uh, has, and has stylized three options for the media in the same way that the Remainers outlined the possible outcomes for a disastrous Brexit that nobody wanted and nobody tactically vo technically voted for. Don't let the jargon fool you. Managed decline is hardly the TfL exit. The financially constrained is the soft TfL exit and the policy constraint is the remain. Ultimately, it will be a very botched job, which is neither of these, but three of all and all the same time, and they will somehow have very bizarre unintended consequences, like remaining Cyprus DLR station as Winston Churchill. For now, let's just hope the TfL gets its mojo back somehow. What a tragedy it would be if the city which invented the underground railway as we know it had to scrap part of it thanks to the ideological politicking that it can never lose such a precious vava voom. So this would indeed be an absolute disaster for London if, if, if this type of thing were to happen. And like I say, the government are specifically doing this for political reasons. There is no other reason to do this except to punish London for voting in Sadiq Khan and essentially try and force the people of London to vote conservative by saying, well, if you vote in the conservative, then we'll give you back your public transport. It's an incredibly stupid move to play by this government because the damage that will be done will be felt for decades to come in the city. And just because you get at someone new who, let's say, they achieve their dream and they get the Conservative in, what guarantees are they going to, so we say, fulfil this funding? We've seen the promises that they've already been pushing about, about the levelling up funds, replacing the European uh, Development Fund, haven't even come close. So even if you do do, London, vote in a Conservative mayor, the chances of that funding being replaced or coming back are very, very much in doubt. And remember, the Conservatives are all about austerity and cuts. So even if you do vote in a Conservative, the chances of, of, of using, shall we say, any budget to try and build new things is, is very, very much in doubt. So I hope this doesn't happen. But as you can see, you can very much see the similarities between uh, Brexit and this TfL's funding crisis. It's very, very clear and close together and will be disastrous for the city. Hugely disastrous for the city. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee. We can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.